Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over how to find the expected value of a discrete random variable. I'm excited for this one because I'm a big fan of probability theory. Hope you're excited too. Here we have a random variable x, and x is equal to the number of dollars won in a game. And then here we have the probability mass function of the random variable x. In the first column, we have the possible values that the random variable can take on. So we could lose $2 in this game, we could lose $1, we could break even, we could win $1, or we could win $2. And in the second column, we have the probability that the random variable takes on each of these values. The probability of losing $2 is 0.35, the probability of winning $1 is 0.4, and so on. And notice that the random variable x is a discrete random variable, because it has a countable number of possible outcomes. It's important to know that x is discrete because that affects how we're going to find its expected value. So how do we find the expected value of x? Well, it's usually written like this, and it's calculated as the weighted sum of the possible outcomes of the random variable x. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me show you with some summation notation. Like I said, the expected value of x is the sum of the weighted outcomes. We have our summation notation here, and what we're summing up are the possible outcomes, but each one is being weighted by the probability of it occurring. And personally, I think that this is a beautiful thing, because it seems like such an intuitive definition. And if we wanted to be a bit more particular with this notation, under the sigma, we can write that x is an element of s, where s is the sample space, which means that it's the set of all possible values that the random variable can take on. So this just says, for the expected value of a discrete random variable, take each possible outcome, multiply it by its probability, and then add all of those up. It's just fantastic, so let's put it to good use and see it in action in order to find the expected outcome of this game. Is it a good idea to play this game, or is it a bad idea to play this game? Only the expected value will tell. I'm going to write this next part down here just to make sure we have enough room. So the expected value of the random variable x is equal to negative 2, that's the first outcome here in the column, multiplied by its probability, which is 0 0.35. Add to that the next possible outcome, which is negative 1, multiplied by its probability, which is 0 0.1, plus 0, the next possible outcome, multiplied by 0 0.05, plus 1, the next possible outcome, times 0.4, that's its probability, and then plus the last possible outcome, which is 2, multiplied by its probability, which is 0 0.1. All right, now I'm going to shrink all of this and move it higher up on the page. So this here is the expected value of the random variable x. Now, of course, we just have to do the computation. So we have negative 2 times 0.35, that's negative 0.7. Then to that, we're adding negative 1 times 0.1, that's going to be negative 0.1. Then we have plus 0 times 0.05, that's just plus 0. Then we have plus 1 times 0.4, that's plus 0.4. And then we have plus 2 times 0.1, that's plus 0.2. And then this is easy enough to add up. We have negative 0.7 plus negative 0.1, that's negative 0.8. Plus 0, plus 0.4, that's negative 0.4. And then plus 0.2, that's negative 0.2. So the expected value is negative 0.2. So what does this mean, that the expected value of the random variable x is negative 0.2? You might notice that negative 0.2 isn't a possible outcome for our random variable, so how could that possibly be the expected value? Well, that's an important thing to notice, because it brings our attention to the fact that the expected value doesn't so much tell us what we would expect to happen in one trial, but it tells us what we would expect to happen long term. So if we only played this game once, of course the most likely outcome would be that we win one dollar. That's clearly the most likely outcome as given in the probability mass function. But this expected value of negative 0.2 tells us that if we were to say play the game ten times, we would expect to come out losing two dollars. Or if we played it a hundred times, we would expect to come out having lost $20. And so, it would not be a good idea to play this game, because we're expected to lose money. Even though the single most likely outcome is that we win $1, it's more likely that we're going to lose some amount of money than it is that we're going to win a dollar. 
you can see how the expected value can be a very important piece of information to have. You might think that it's most likely that something's going to turn out a certain way, but if you calculate the expected value, you might be surprised. So I hope you think that this is as rad as I do. One more time, the expected value of a discrete random variable is calculated by taking each possible outcome of the random variable, multiplying it by its probability, and then adding all of those products together. And that's how you find your expected value. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you'd like to see more examples of calculating expected values, I'd be happy to do some. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. See through big glass jar